Good morning and welcome to my studio. I'm Russell Smith and I wanted to make this video this morning to talk about my palette. Uh, what pigments I'll use on my palette? What's my lineup here? I've been asked that question a lot over the years, what pigments I use. Uh, and in the past, it's been a little bit of a difficult question to answer because I've been doing this for 20 years and it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I've found a lineup of pigments that I'm really happy with. I've, I've been experimenting for seems like 20 years now, uh, but I'm finally to the point where I've found a lineup of pigments that work for me. I know how to use them. That's not to say that my palette won't evolve more over the years. It probably will. I'll probably change out some colors here and there. But for the time being, I've got a, uh, a lineup that really works well for me. So let's take a look at what I'm using. So here's my palette. It's a glass palette uh, with a neutral gray backing. The reason for the neutral gray is because that allows me to uh, more correctly judge my colors and my values uh, when I'm mixing paints. It's not against a stark white background and it's not against a black background. It's just a neutral gray. Uh, You'll notice that the colors, I've lined them up from with white on the right going down to black on the left. I always line my colors up in the same color, in the same order rather. That way when I'm mixing pigments, I know where each pigment is. I don't have to go hunt and search for it if I'm mixing a color. I know exactly where it's going to be on my palette. You might also notice that I use three versions of each of the primaries. I use a cool version, a warm version, and an earth tone version. Uh, that just gives you a, a broad range of mixing options uh, and it helps you mix uh, just a, a broader variety of colors. Now zooming in here, let's start with my white. Uh, this is a titanium white. I've been using titanium white all of my career, which means I understand how it works. I understand its properties. Uh, it's a nice smooth pigment, a nice smooth paint. Uh, those of you who mix paint, you artists, you'll know that the titanium is a cooling white so that when you tint it, tint another color with titanium white, it cools it down just slightly. So you have to adjust for that a little bit. Um, I've been toying with the idea of trying flake white. I hear a lot of professional artists singing the praises of flake white. Uh, flake white is hard to get though because uh, it's a toxic white. It contains lead, which means you have to be really careful when you use it. Uh, but you can get it, uh, you can get it at most art stores, but you can find some online that do carry it. I know Natural Pigments carries it. Uh, so I've been considering giving that a go and uh, seeing how I like the, the properties of flake white. But for now, still using titanium white. Next to that is my cool yellow. That's Cad Lemon Yellow. It makes some really nice greens uh, because it does not have red in it. Uh, as you'll notice with the cad yellow medium right next to that, that's my warmer yellow, it does have red in it. If you compare the two pigments, you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. Next to that is my yellow ochre. Uh, yellow ochre is something that every artist should have on their palette. Um, I would discourage using it directly. Uh, only, only every now and then would I ever do that, but don't use cad yellow directly. But it does make a, a nice accent color every now and then, and it's good for using as a base for other pigments. Uh, it's a staple uh, that you should have on your palette. Next to that is cat orange. Now you really don't need an orange on your palette. I just happen to like orange. I like it as an accent color. I like it in warming up sunlit passages on a painting. Uh, so I like to keep an orange on my palette. Uh, this is a warm orange, it's just straight cat orange. Next to that is vermilion. Now, most people uh, would say, and I believe technically, that vermilion is classified as a red, but to my eyes, I actually consider it a cool orange. So that's my warm and cool orange. Next to that is something called permanent matter medium. Now, what is permanent matter medium? Those of you who understand pigments know of alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is a, a, is a centuries old cold red. Uh, that artists have been using for many, many, many years, ever since the Renaissance. But the problem with alizarin crimson is that alizarin crimson is a fugitive color, meaning that it fades quickly. Uh, but Rembrandt's got a nice uh, pigment here called permanent matter, matter being the key ingredient in alizarin crimson. And uh, of course, permanent matter kind of says it all. So this is basically my permanent alizarin crimson, my cool red. 
Now, you might recall that I said I like to keep a warm version and a cool version of each pigment. Now, if I'm considering this a cool orange and this a cool red, what's missing? Well, obviously, it's a warm red. Uh, the reason why I don't have a warm red on my palette is because I've just found that if I can put a touch of alizarin into a touch of ver vermilion, uh, it just makes a nice cad red. So I don't need it on my palette. It's very easy to mix. So moving on, this is Venetian red. I used to keep burnt sienna in this spot. Uh, but the problem with burnt sienna is that it tends to permeate everything. It's another one of those colors that it's easy to fall back on and use it in every mix. And it's also kind of a boring color. So I took it off my palette and I replaced it with something a little more interesting, uh, which is uh, now my earth tone red. It's Venetian red. You could also put Indian red in this slot, which I've toyed with every now and then, but I, I like the Venetian red a little bit better. Next to that is what's called mauve blue shade. This is my purple, my violet. Uh, I used to keep Windsor violet in this slot, uh, but Windsor violet is just a really potent color, a little too strong for my taste, so I replaced it with mauve blue shade. Next to that, ultramarine blue. Now that's another one of those colors that's been around for centuries. Uh, and I've been, it's, it's one of those colors for me that again, I've been using for 20 years. I know how it works. Um, I just really like ultramarine blue. It's a reddish blue. That's my warm blue, if you will. Next to that is a color I've come uh, across only recently. I used to keep cerulean blue in this spot, but I've replaced it recently with cobalt teal. And I've got to say, I love this color. Um, it just mixes well with the other pigments, especially with the yellows, to make some absolutely exquisite greens. I really like cobalt teal, so I'm going to be keeping that one in the spot uh, for a while now. And last in the order, this is my earth tone blue, which technically, if you look at the label, is ivory black. Now, why do I call it a blue? Is because I don't use it straight on the on a painting. I always add a little bit of white into it to uh, lighten it up some. It just makes a nice cool gray or earth tone blue, if you will. Now, uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, don't keep black on your palette, just get rid of it. Well, I will tell you again, this makes a nice earth tone neutral blue, but don't use straight black. Don't put it on your palette um, as far as that goes. Keep it, just put a little bit on your palette for an earth tone blue but don't use straight black. That's a bad habit and it's boring. So if I don't use straight black, you may ask, how do I get black? Well, that's easy. I mix a three, three color black from my primaries. What colors do I use from that? I use ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent, or excuse me, permanent matter medium, and yellow ochre. Now, why do I choose those three? Well, if you look at them, those are the darkest versions of the primaries on my palette. I mix my black from the primaries and I use those three because they are the darkest versions. So that's my usual lineup. Um, every now and then I'll put something else in the bullpen off to the side here. I'll put an extra color as an accent or maybe as a glaze. I've got a, a handful of colors over here. Uh, you might see some over there that I use as glazes and accent colors, but this is my lineup. This is my starting lineup that I go to every time. So. I hope that's helpful and informative. Um, I hope somebody can use that or maybe that you might see some pigments here that you might try to want to experiment with. But uh, that's what I'm using and um, I hope that's informative.